A very warm welcome to you all today. It's a pleasure for me coming back to Texas um, to help this presentation today. And when I left uh, Munich some days ago, it was snowing, and I was really excited uh, to come over um, um, uh, to this conference. First of all, I want to thank the uh, uh, Charles E. Holman Foundation uh, inviting me, and, it's, um, and I also wa want to um, uh, send some greetings fr uh, from Europe uh, to you, especially uh, Cindy and your exciting uh, team and co-workers. As you know, we have already started beginning of this year to set up a subsidiary of the uh, foundation in Europe to spread all your knowledge, all your experience, and um, hopefully we are doing a great job. My two days aim in my presentation is uh, to give you some um, uh, information about maybe uh, a bit other approaches uh, to beat the problem of Morgellons disease. And um, uh, in my clinic, um, I have started already 10 years ago taking care first for Lyme patients. I have to tell you a short story before starting my presentation. Um, I'm in the field of tick-borne disease now for more than 27 years. I started to see first Lyme patient in 1990, and I always noticed uh, some, call it weird, patients in the 19s presenting all these typical symptoms uh, and complaints, the skin lesion, and a different picture as I was used to all the other uh, patients uh, having problems with tick-borne diseases, and I had no clue at that time about no Morgellons. And exactly when I joined my first ILETS meeting here in U.S. in Philadelphia 2006, meeting first Ginger's uh, Dr. Safely, uh, Dr. Stricker, um, uh, some of these guys always asked me about question, do you have uh, uh, seen Morgellons patient in Europe? And I had no clue what they meant at that time. And uh, it took me some time um, to, to understand and to get all these informations. And um, uh, finally, I appreciate very much uh, to get their, their input uh, for my future work. And uh, being back in Germany, I noticed, uh, or I was more aware about uh, problems uh, um, of Morgellons patients. And since then, we started already to give always our best um, to beat this illness as well. And I can tell you, we have a lot more uh, patients uh, year by year, and their, their numbers are increasing dramatically. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have uh, good epidemiologic data um, uh, to give your information how many uh, patients are really infected with this disease. Um, but um, uh, uh, we try um, via the subsidiary of the Charles E. Holman Foundation to get some more good uh, data, uh, which I might be present somewhere later next year or the year after. Okay, so let's go into my presentation. Um, my two days aim is to give you, uh, so first of all, I have n uh, uh, to declare no uh, in uh, conflicts of interest. Um, so in, in our clinic, uh, we start already uh, seeing patient first uh, with the typical anamnesis, and the anamnesis uh, is spe specific um, regarding um, Morgellons patients. Um, you have to ask some, some more uh, question uh, before you start with, inspect, uh, with the inspection of the patient, with the examination, and you need also sp um, some specific ones um, like ultrasound or ECG regarding possible treatment later on, and in some of the patients we need also MRI or spec scans, especially if they are um, uh, presenting some severe neurological issues as well. Um, to go for that, uh, we have developed specific uh, um, anamnesis uh, questionnaires. Um, so it's a hard job um, uh, for our patient because um, before getting first personal contact, they have to fill up 15 pages, and we try to get um, many, many um, information, um, uh, very detailed about uh, affection of the different organ system. And uh, we repeat this later on, after three months, after six months. Um, that is also, uh, in some kind, a quality management to see if we are on the right track. 
Um, additionally, we are going uh, in our patient also for something which we um, uh, call a co-infection list. Uh, it came up already in this conference that uh, Morgan's disease um, is definitely linked uh, to some uh, specific infectious diseases. Borrelia is one of them, uh, but we have also noticed big issues in Europe um, and uh, connection to Bartonella and, um, uh, and another germ which was part of the presentation of Dr. Shah yesterday. Um, we see a lot um, uh, infection with chlamydia species uh, in Europe and I can tell you minimum 85 of the pa Morgan's patients I have seen in Europe has um, uh, beside Borrelia problem with chlamydia, especially chlamydia pneumonia infection. And this is a very common uh, bacteria, I know, but um, um, it could be also um, uh, bring some challenge uh, for diagnosis and for the treatment later on as well. Um, so this is a one, uh, one, uh, one sheet um, uh, questionnaire and um, the aim of uh, this co-infection list is uh, fi finally to get um, in some kind of prediction what kind of testing uh, we should go even not to waste money and um, uh, it's very helpful. And we are using also a third questionnaire um, because I have learned um, one of the problems definitely the infection, but there are some other uh, impacts as well. So finally, many of the patients have, uh, have at the same time big problem uh, with ongoing inflammation. Yeah, uh, there's a constantly upregulation of um, cytokines um, uh, while having a chronic infection, and that is also one of the main focus we have to go for. For this reason, we ask kindly our patient to give on, uh, some impact, um, uh, some information um, uh, via these questionnaires. Um, the second uh, um, uh, task in, uh, in a holistic approach is uh, to go for the diagnostic. Um, I don't want to go in detail because some of the next presenters uh, will uh, uh, doing so, um, but um, uh, just um, uh, uh, to mention it, it is necessary um, to go for some testing as uh, Dr. Safely also pointed out, and we are always uh, are interesting uh, in Morgan's patient um, about uh, onset of Borrelia infection, and you know there are a certain bunch of different test methods. Um, the two-tier testing is also uh, very common in Europe, but does not very often lead to good outcoming results. And for this reason, we have also um, uh, access uh, to further a test system, the so-called cellular test, uh, like um, lymphocyte transformation testing, like ALI spot technique, and we are also going for the CD57 cell test uh, just to get some more information about uh, chronicity um, of uh, these infectious diseases. Um, uh, C six uh, peptide ELISA is available and uh, we have already started uh, to offer in our own lab uh, culturing for uh, Borrelia. That's pretty well running meanwhile, but it's not an um, uh, uh, indication to go always for such specific testings. Um, um, but you need a certain um, uh, uh, background of information. Um, it's also very important to go on the uh, co-infections. And um, you see on my next slide, um, uh, red colored, uh, Bartonella and Chlamydia. And, uh, so the, 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 the big bees like Borrelia, Bartonella, and uh, we have also seen some uh, problems with Babesia, which will you see in the next um, slide. Um, these germs are the most important ones uh, regarding Morgellons patients. And this is a very interesting slide for you because nobody before had pointed out that there could be also some problems um, with parasitic uh, infection. So Babesia, uh, it's quite well known. Um, but we have seen the first cases uh, in Europe uh, where warm diseases could have also impact. Um, I had recently um, two Morgellons patients uh, who had additionally uh, Toxocara carnis infection, uh, which is uh, the dog tapeworm. And this seems to be in Europe uh, also uh, widespread, especially uh, in patients from the Balkan area, um, from Austria. And we had single cases seen also in the western parts of Europe. Um, uh, 
at the moment we do not uh, we don't know exactly um, how widespread um, these uh, worm disease are um, but uh, we will go ahead with some more research um, even to find out um, so toxocara has been found uh, in several patients um, uh, suffering from tick-borne diseases and I have seen two Morgellons patients who had the same problem Okay, additionally, um, we see also much more often um, uh, other co-infection, but that is mostly based on um, immuno immunocompromised uh, immune function. Um, so, you know, Borrelia is pretty well known uh, to, uh, to be able to downscale uh, the, the host immune um, system, and that could lead to much more open doors, especially uh, via the upper respiratory tract. And that's the reason that you, kind, uh, that you could find um, at the same time um, some more viral infection and especially, you know, one of the big health issues of Morgellons patient is also very severe fatigue and if you go um, uh, for diagnostic you will uh, very often find um, big problems, reactivation or new infection, especially with Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, we see at the same time uh, more often Coxsackie virus infection and Cytomegaly virus infection as well. So all the others could be seen, um, but um, I guess um, they are um, uh, they're not so important regarding um, uh, Morgellons disease. Okay, um, so if we talk about uh, Morgellons, so um, uh, Dr. Safely just pointed out um, the different findings and you know, um, so mostly patients will start to present these um, um, at the beginning unexplainable um, uh, skin findings and uh, in later stages you, f uh, you will find some more additionally symptoms and complain so as um, uh, severe tiredness I have mentioned so uh, these patients have very often poor sleep they have uh, big cognitive uh, problems or uh, uh, dysfunction uh, loss of memory, um, they have uh, concentration problems and so on and that is also part of the illness and you can also find some uh, beha uh, behavioral and other mental disorders but not in a way uh, seeing uh, DOPs, um, definitely not. Um, but sometimes it is needed uh, to go for some psychiatric medication but not uh, instead um, of uh, anti-infective treatment and that is for me very important uh, to point out. So, in the following two or three slides, um, uh, you see a huge bunch of possible other symptoms and complaints and um, the, uh, the numbers uh, right hand side are based on um, our experience in our clinic, so it's not representative for all doctors. But, um, you know, um, uh, chronic fatigue, uh, exhaustion, tiredness is one of the major if you, uh, issues, so I see that in more uh, of 90% of the patient. And uh, other issues are mostly based on chronic pain syndromes, could be the typical muscular um, uh, uh, skeletal uh, uh, pain, or uh, we see much more often very severe neuropathic pain syndromes, but that is something I want to uh, mention a little bit uh, later again in some specific slides. Um, so. Um, that are also not unusual uh, findings. Um, patient uh, could have uh, sleep disorders and it depends on the uh, possible co-infection. So for Borrelia, for example, it's very typical to wake up several times per night and then having problems uh, to sleep again. And uh, if there is, um, if there is uh, influence by possible Bartonella infection, you will also find big, big issues with um, uh, problems to fall asleep. So these patients are extremely tired and uh, their only aim is uh, to fall asleep immediately, but they can't. And this is typically, uh, typically seen uh, in Bartonella as well. And um, the other symptoms of um, uh, affection of the eyes or something uh, is not seen uh, in, um, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a big percentage, but it's always already um, a part of the infection. 
so I want to show you also some pictures not so detailed about the fibers, the specs and something like that. So more seen uh, from our perspective uh, as infectologists. Um, so many of the patients having um, Morgan's disease and when we are going for the anamnesis, uh, they could remember very well having a tick bite for, uh, and uh, followed by an erythema migrans. Unfortunately, only in around 50% of the cases. Um, a more rare finding um, uh, regarding uh, our anamnesis is the onset of another skin finding, um, the Borrelial um, lymphocytoma. Um, this is seen in around 1 to 2 percent of the patient, um, so that could be the start of Morgellons as well, looking back in their medical history. Oops, no, I didn't, sorry. So the next slide um, is um, a typical skin finding, um, uh, which is um, a very safe sign for chronic Lyme, the acrodermatitis atrophicans. That's exactly um, uh, what uh, Ginger described. So the purple uh, skin or the redness of the skin, and it's a very, uh, very vulnerable skin, um, so based um, mostly on presence of a certain strain of uh, Borrelia, uh, which is called Borrelia afselii, uh, a common strain in Europe, and it's also present here uh, in the U.S. Um, so uh, if you see this uh, ACA in patient, uh, you don't need any more lab tests, so it's a safe sign for chronic Lyme, and uh, then you can start immediately um, with anti-infective treatment. So now I will start uh, with the most important part of my presentation, um, our um, specific uh, holistic approach, which we always run in our clinic. Um, it is based on uh, um, eight pillars, um, so you know it's a little bit. As you can see, it's a little bit um, like uh, building a house. You need a stable basement, uh, which could be the anamnesis, which could be all the different types of uh, diagnostic. You need strong walls, and then uh, you will have a safe roof. Um, that means finally uh, good outcoming results. And um, I want to explain in the following slide what uh, we mean uh, with, these, uh, uh, with this uh, different approach. Um, one of the important columns is the first one, the anti-infective treatment. And um, you will see um, a little bit later the, uh, this slide again but uh, with a different column. Um, so at the beginning, um, I want to um, explain the conventional um, approaches we are running in our clinic. And uh, anti-infective treatment means uh, that you need a certain uh, group of uh, medication. Could be antibiotics for all the bacterial um, infection. Could be antiparasitics or antelmintics. Um, uh, for um, a specific co-infection or uh, regarding possible onset of worm disease. Um, uh, we need additionally sometimes antivirals and antifungals as well. Um, this is um, um, uh, a good um, basement finally to get rid of all the infections um, uh, uh, which a patient could present. Um, it's pretty hard now to give you um, an overview about all the different uh, antibiotic protocols, so it's much easier uh, to explain a bit about the certain um, uh, aims of the different substance group, groups. So it's quite easy um, if you start uh, treating patients in a very early infection, means stage one, for example, for Borrelia, um, then uh, the normal cell wall uh, antibiotics are doing a pretty well work uh, uh, job. That could be the beta lactames um, like penicillin and amoxicycline or the cephalosporines. Uh, but unfortunately, this group uh, does not uh, make a good job later on um, in, uh, in the chronic stages of these infectious diseases. That means um, uh, we do not offer uh, any more only monotherapy. Uh, we are always going for a certain combination. And um, the reason for that are all the different polymorphism forms of some of the bacterias. 
uh, we know meanwhile um, that there are different other forms um, uh, um, seen for Borrelia, the so-called former cystic forms, now round body forms. Uh, we have heard about L forms, BLEPS forms, um, biofilm formation and so on. Um, this is one of the challenges uh, in diagnostic before, but now um, especially here in going for uh, the best possible treatment. And um, please uh, be aware that more than 90% of the bugs we are dealing with here regarding uh, Morgellons and um, uh, tick-borne diseases are so-called intracellular bacteria. That means they have the ability um, uh, to hide in other body cells, and this is one of the mechanisms uh, to survive in the host um, uh, organism. And um, if we go for a specific treatment of Borrelia, which is um, best connected to Morgellons, uh, it's similar to Bartonella or Babesia or whatever, or Chlamydia, um, uh, we have to be aware about the different polymorphism forms and that lead uh, to um, specific uh, approaches uh, finally to get rid uh, of these infectious diseases. So um, uh, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a group of antibiotics who are able to beat the round body forms or former cystic forms. Um, that could be based on so-called antimalarias like Artemisia, a herbal substance, which is uh, very important. Um, you will see later on in um, uh, some other slides. Um, or the plaquenil, hydroxychloroquine, or the uh, new generation is based on artovacron. Um, we have um, uh, antibiotics like metronidazole or tinidazole um, uh, to, uh, to be the cystic or round body forms of um, these infectious diseases. And uh, we have um, a huge bunch of so-called intercellular uh, effective uh, substances, so based on macrolids, um, based on quinolones, um, on, um, and uh, tetracyclines. And uh, there's also a new kit in the block. Um, um, uh, we, we do not know exactly um, now about the role of Dapsone, which is also a uh, so-called sulfonamide. Um, so uh, one of the first uh, doctors who had introduced this kind of treatment um, uh, was uh, Dr. Horowitz. And um, actually, they're running also some trials in Europe. Uh, Professor Perron, who is the head of one of the biggest infectious disease hospitals in France, has started already ready and uh, we are actually doing also our first trials in, uh, in Germany in our clinic but I guess um, it's a little bit too early um, uh, now to give your uh, best statements about these approaches. Uh, we need some more time, we need some more um, uh, patient um, even to see if uh, the use of Dapsone uh, is uh, in general recommendable. And, um, as you know, there's uh, a lot going on in the background in uh, some of your universities here in the uh, in U.S. Um, to find out better antimicrobial approaches. And um, it will be an interesting year, especially the second part of the year, uh, to get um, uh, more information about uh, all these new onsets. Um, mostly, uh, we go um, in our patient on combinations. Um, uh, so what I have learned, um, if you um, be focused on Borrelia, Bartonella, um, um, it's recommendable especially to go on macrolids, to go um, uh, on um, tetracycline at the same time. And uh, I had also seen uh, really best outcoming results um, if we go for rifampicin, um, at the same time. For me, it looks like that rifampicin could be also one of these key substances um, in combination to macrolids, in combination to tetracycline, uh, to doing best jobs. And uh, there was recently publication that in general for all intracellular bacteria is recommendable always to add some rifampicin. Um, so, um, but uh, in summary, it's always a challenge uh, to find uh, the best uh, protocol and um, the aim is always not, not to go anymore uh, for some standard protocol so, uh, as it was uh, in the past. So the trend is more and more to individualize, to customize uh, the treatment um, uh, for our patients and uh, going for really specific combination. 
And uh, I personally believe, and this is a short statement at that point, that the treatment uh, somewhere in the future, maybe in five years, could be completely different. Um, uh, so based on new studies, based um, um, on um, uh, gene exp uh, um, expression and um, uh, new um, uh, approaches in diagnostic, that could lead later on to completely different um, approaches. So um, we are identifying now more and more receptors on the certain bacteria and might be in five or I would say in latest in 10 years, uh, the treatment will be uh, completely different. Um, but um, uh, let's hope and see what's going to happen. Uh, it's too early uh, to give some more uh, comments on this. Okay, um, um, the co-infection are also playing a major role and uh, for me one of the most often seen one is chlamydia and, uh, and Bartonella. I have pointed that out several times uh, during my presentation. Um, sometimes, um, uh, so uh, chlamydia is also one of uh, these issues. Uh, we see some more uh, bacterial infection, um, um, but um, um, I have uh, pointed out uh, before. So let's talk uh, some minutes about chlamydia pneumoniae, which is a very common um, uh, infection. And so during the past 11 years uh, since um, uh, joining um, uh, on a constantly based American um, uh, conferences, so islets meetings and some others. Um, I was always wondering, um, because nobody uh, was taking care here in US for chlamydia, uh, which is um, exactly the most common co-infection uh, in Europe. And um, I mentioned 85% of the patients are presenting uh, problems with chlamydia, mostly based on a reactivation. Chlamydia is an uh, airborne transmitted infection, which is very common, and um, it could be also found um, uh, in, uh, in ticks, um, so, uh, but most often transmitted uh, via air. Uh, so the symptoms are uh, uh, in some kind overlapping with the typical Borrelia symptoms, so um, uh, patient having issues with chlamydia, uh, they have the typical uh, musculoskeletal problems, uh, but some of the symptoms are also unique. Uh, you see um, very often sinusitis-like uh, symptoms on complaints. You see patients having big issues with uh, thorax pain, with some cardiac issues uh, similar to uh, vascular uh, um, uh, diseases. And um, these patients have also uh, big uh, problems with breathing. Uh, so here in the US, mostly uh, it's linked to Babesia infection if you go into the studies and literature. But I don't believe um, in 100% uh, the same. So what we have learned in Europe, um, uh, chlamydia is doing the same regarding the coughing, regarding um, um, the um, uh, a slimy environment in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the throat. And that is very often connected uh, to chlamydia pneumonia infection and could lead also to big um, issues. Um, um, nevertheless, uh, you can find uh, other symptoms as well, so very severe pain syndromes in joints and muscles. And um, there's also an interesting uh, finding, um, even the comorbidity uh, to other very um, uh, 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 severe illnesses. Uh, so de there's definitely a link um, similar uh, like Borrelia to uh, Alzheimer's disease, um, to multiple sclerosis and uh, some other uh, severe um, uh, health conditions. Um, risk factor uh, for chlamydia, it's similar to many of the other, uh, is immunosuppression, uh, especially children or elder people um, uh, 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 are much more often targeted by uh, chlamydia uh, pneumonia infection. Um, so there's a certain bunch of uh, diagnostic available, so cellular testings, uh, the classical IFT testing, ELISA. Um, so I never have done any PCR because uh, the serological testing is uh, uh, very, very accurate uh, for these uh, certain bugs. And uh, the treatment is uh, also similar to Borrelia infection. So first-line recommendation could be based on macrolids and tetracyclines. In some, uh, some cases, we need um, additionally uh, rifampicin. Um, so uh, in a second line, you can go for quinolones like levofloxacin, uh, but 
um, uh, mostly you have good chances uh, to beat this bug uh, in, uh, in patients. Uh, there's a um, there's, um, lower percentage of patients. We have a big problem with chronic infection, um, uh, so it uh, took uh, a lot more effort and power uh, to get rid of these bacteria, but in general, I guess, um, uh, based on a good antibiotic uh, protocol, you have uh, really good chances to get rid of it. Um, so, um, uh, Bartonella uh, is also one of these um, bacterial infection, um, uh, obligate intra or uh, mostly intracellularly seen bug, and this is different to most of the other uh, bacterial infection. Uh, Bartonella is most of the time uh, int uh, only intracellular found in the red blood cells. And you know, the, uh, the infrastructure and milieu of red blood cells are totally different to the rest of the body cells, and that could lead uh, also to some more problems regarding diagnostic. Um, so it's pretty hard to detect on uh, Bartonella while doing uh, normal serological testings, and it's even hard uh, to get a confirmation by doing specific ones like PCR or fish test and, um, uh, and similar uh, testings. Um, so sometimes it's more recommendable um, uh, to start in patient uh, where you suspected uh, Bartonella uh, without getting any confirmation by doing lab tests uh, to look for the specific clinical findings and uh, mostly you will, be, um, uh, you, uh, you will make a correct decision to include this uh, if you see some of these typical um, uh, symptoms and complaints. Um, we do not have the time to go in more detail uh, on the specific finding. Uh, Dr. Safely had uh, shown some pictures about the typical Bartonella rashes. She pointed also out uh, about the vascular components of this illness, and uh, this is uh, what uh, Bartonella is uh, making specific. And um, uh, I guess it's one of the bis uh, biggest tasks uh, for, uh, for physicians uh, to, uh, to be well trained in all the symptoms and complaints. Sometimes it's more important as to know about the testings. Um, if you see a lot of patients, then it uh, will make it much easier uh, for, uh, for you uh, finally to find uh, the diagnosis and um, uh, to go on, uh, on a good treatment. Good. Um, so another uh, problem with uh, Bartonella um, is um, the, um, uh, the onset of uh, severe neuropathic uh, problems. So um, this, is, uh, this looks familiar uh, with, um, uh, you can see um, in patients having uh, Morgellons uh, issues. So all the uh, burning uh, sensation, the creepy crawly sensation uh, could be seen as well without having uh, Morgellons and other infectious diseases. And um, I guess um, there, there, there's a big link uh, between um, these infections and Morgellons. So, uh, um, Dr. Safely had shown a lot of pictures about uh, the, uh, the different skin findings, so I guess it's not um, needed um, uh, to, get, uh, to go uh, in this in more details. Um, so, and the treatment um, I will mention a little bit later as well. I guess it's more important now to give you um, uh, some more information about alternative um, uh, approaches. So. Um, but just um, uh, not uh, just to mention it, so it is in, uh, based on a conventional uh, approach. It is sometimes also necessary not to go only on antibiotics. Um, so some of the patients have some fungal issues. Uh, some of the patients have a problem with uh, uh, some additional parasites, as we had seen in the former slide. So it is um, necessary. Um, uh, to extend um, uh, some of the protocols even to get uh, much better results later on. The second part of my two days presentation um, is focused on possible alternative um, uh, approaches. You know, there's a certain percentage of patients who have some medical issues uh, regarding uh, the use of antibiotics. Um, so some of the patients are presenting allergies or very severe intolerances where it's not possible um, uh, to go on that. 
And um, this was a problem I noticed very early, um, uh, being, uh, being a physician. And so, you know, uh, there are two options um, uh, to go for that. You can, uh, you can tell your patients, oh, sorry, um, we have first to invent your medication um, uh, uh, to, um, uh, uh, to get improvements, or uh, you can look for alternative solutions. And I'm, I'm a conventional trained doctor, so I'm not a naturopath, I'm not a homeopath. Um, but I was always interesting in, um, uh, in these fields. And finally, starting so big early uh, in the 90s, um, I, um, I went on, uh, on many uh, conferences and workshops to get some more, um, uh, some more knowledge and experience uh, regarding these, um, uh, um, these uh, different approaches. And um, uh, I want to uh, give you now um, a short overview about our um, uh, approaches uh, in Germany, uh, which seems to be very effective um, in uh, treatment of Morgellons disease as well. So in general, the aims are the same uh, compared to the conventional treatment. So based on uh, certain herbals, um, um, our aim is to get rid of the bacteria, um, Borrelia, and uh, if they are, uh, the co-infections. And um, uh, the herbal remedies have some additional advantages. Um, they are not taking care only for the infection. So in a different combination, um, you can start at the same time um, uh, with uh, other support uh, for the, uh, for the uh, human organism. Um, you can strange and uh, build up uh, a strange immune system. Yeah. Uh, some of the uh, herbs are able uh, to start immediately uh, repairing processes of the, um, uh, of the uh, certain tissues which are affected um, while having uh, some of these infectious diseases. Um, so it's, it's definitely more an uh, holistic approach. Um, here in the U.S. Uh, you have also um, uh, a lot of uh, alternative protocols. I just want to mention uh, the, the Buna protocol is pretty well known. Uh, so um, uh, beyond balance formulas, Cowden protocol, I guess, barn right formulas, uh, the Zhang protocol, um, are, uh, most of you are definitely familiar with these um, uh, different approaches. And uh, in Europe, um, we, we have unfortunately not the same access um, uh, to these uh, protocols. Uh, there are some legal issues, um, so unfortunately none of the American companies had ever tried uh, to get an official listing of their products. Um, so um, uh, uh, it is a uh, uh, legal problem to go for that um, uh, routinely in our, uh, in our clinic. Um, so um, during the past two or three years, uh, some of my colleagues in Europe lost, lost their licenses uh, while going on the American protocols. So they are definitely pretty good, and I have uh, experience with all of them, uh, but only um, uh, based on officially studies uh, we have done in our clinic. So we had studies with Cowden Protocol, with Buner, uh, with Barn Wright, even to find out um, uh, how good um, these um, uh, protocols are working, and I can tell you, um, I get most of them are pretty well working. But unfortunately, due to legal issues, uh, we had to see uh, for uh, we, we had to look for uh, alternative solution. And for this reason, um, uh, we are actually uh, running some comp um, uh, some different approaches, and uh, that will be seen in my next uh, slide. So one of the protocols uh, we use in the um, in the BCA clinic is called Lime Plus protocol. Um, this is originally from, uh, from Austria, and, um, and the other protocol uh, is called M protocol um, that's not um, uh, linked to Morgellons. Um, so this, this, was, um, this is not a brand, uh, believe me, and uh, you will see uh, some more detailed information uh, just in a couple of minutes. Uh, so uh, this, is this was uh, only a working title. Um, it's um, a certain uh, combination of different herbal compounds um, uh, which seems to be very good and uh, very successful um, in uh, treatment of um, all these uh, chronic infections and um, other health um, issues in patients. 
Um, uh, that is what I have mentioned before. Due to legal issues, uh, actually, it's not uh, possible for me um, uh, to run um, the American protocols. Um, but in general, I have to uh, mention um, that this uh, kind of treatment is definitely um, uh, well tolerated and recommendable um, and a good um, uh, alternative solution. So let's go into more details um, of the Lyme Plus protocol. Uh, this is a typical um, uh, treatment um, plan for our patient. So in the upper part, um, uh, you find uh, the needed um, herbs for um, the anti-infective treatment. We are also focused on, um, um, on the immune function to give additional support. Um, uh, you will get detailed information just in a few seconds. Um, uh, we, are strain, uh, we are downscaling uh, possible local or general uh, inflammation. Um, um, uh, we detoxify at the same time as needed. And uh, we also go for uh, some uh, alkalizing medication uh, while uh, treating patients uh, in this way. So some more detailed information. So the anti-infective treatment is uh, finally based on three different um, uh, compounds. One is called um, uh, TBB, and TBB, um, the main focus of TBB is to target all the different bacterial, viral, and parasitic infection. Um, so main herbs uh, which had been used in this compound is based on uh, polyporos, andrographis, Maybe uh, 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 you see some, um, some similar um, uh, herbs um, uh, based on other protocols like Buna and so on. Artemisia is a very important compound um, uh, to target um, uh, viruses, and there's um, also some good antibacterial and antiparasitic um, effectiveness. Um, uh, another uh, important uh, 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 compound is based on uh, red grape um, uh, seeds, on grapefruit uh, seed extract, and on the allicine, which is uh, from garlic. And um, uh, so at the bottom of the slide, you can see um, a part of a study which had been done by Professor um, uh, uh, Gilbert. Uh, she's originally from Canada. Um, uh, from Canada, uh, living and um, uh, doing research now for I guess, at least 15 years in Finland. And uh, she's running a um, research department at the University of Uvascular, and together with one of her uh, postdocs, uh, Dr. Marilainen, um, she started in 2015 a study um, uh, with this uh, um, uh, 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 focus on this herbal protocol. Um, so we have experience now since um, some years more, so it was introduced in around six or seven years ago, um, but at the beginning we had only empirical um, experience. So um, uh, it looked like uh, that the use of these herbal extracts um, uh, were pretty well running, um, but our aim was to get some additional information based on real studies. So uh, Professor Gilbert um, uh, offered um, to run this study. Um, it was an in vitro study, and finally, um, these are part of her uh, results. Um, the uh, the anti-infective part, based on the TBB capsules, is uh, doing a good job. Uh, finally, um, uh, these compounds are able uh, to kill Borrelia and all the other uh, 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 bugs if they are uh, if they are present. Um, this, the second compound um, is, uh, was more um, uh, seen as um, uh, a general organ support and, uh, so, sorry, um, the, um, the, the APP um, is um, a very high dose Artemisia and uh, at the same time some monolaurine, rosemary and black pepper. Um, so we use this compound nearly in all patients having at the same time um, uh, antibiotics because this um, uh, combination leads to much better absorption of uh, antibiotics and transfer of the antibiotics into the intracellular space. Um, patient will get that at the same time running alternative protocols and uh, you can also go uh, this uh, best um, in addition to uh, conventional anti anti uh, antibiotics. Uh, that leads to much better outcoming results which uh, Professor uh, 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 Gilbert has shown in her, uh, in her study as well. And the third comp 
Oops, uh, the third compound uh, was more seen uh, at first um, uh, as a general organ support, so to support liver and kidney and to give some immunosupport. Um, but finally, uh, it came up in uh, uh, Professor Gilbert's study that even, um, and it seems based on all the berry extracts, blueberry, cranberry, uh, 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 liganberry, that um, that could also lead to some um, additionally anti-infective effects and uh, altogether is uh, doing really um, uh, a good job, a job and uh, we are excited uh, about the outcoming results finally. Uh, this is uh, one of the protocols um, uh, which you can already use at the same time with conventional antibiotics. And um, uh, one of the outcoming results, um, Professor Gilbert told us after doing the study, uh, that uh, the Lyme Plus protocol is definitely able um, to destroy biofilm formations. That was also a very uh, big point for us. Um, and we feel much safer now uh, in uh, going for that treatment. And uh, the third um, finding was it is possible to combine with any of the conventional uh, uh, antibiotics. And um, uh, Professor Gilbert found out that uh, it is possible to go on a bit lower dosages of antibiotics. That means you can save antibiotics by running um, uh, herbal compounds at the same time. And I guess this is a very big advantage um, uh, in the treatment. So um, uh, another herbal uh, protocol which uh, we use, uh, the so-called M protocol, and that is based only on my own thoughts. Um, it's not a brand, it's not available in any shop, um, but I uh, want uh, to keep you informed about this because um, uh, it's interesting. So, these, um, so it is based on six different herbal, um, uh, com uh, herbal uh, uh, compounds, so in tincture form. Um, you know, uh, there's M1, M2, M3, M6, and uh, up to M6. And um, the, the herbs we are using in these herbal tinctures are different to the capsules I had presented before. So um, mainly it is based on uh, teasel root and uh, some uh, artemisia, uh, which I had um, uh, 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 shown a bit uh, before. And um, so these compounds are also, um, uh, or this uh, combination of herbals are doing a good job. And there's something unique now. Um, the tinctures uh, could be uh, prepared by any pharmacist in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and meanwhile, um, this compound is ec uh, accepted in Germany as real medication. So it's not anymore free available. You need a doctor's prescription to go on that. And that had never uh, been before. Um, with other words, uh, we are actually trying uh, to find um, uh, a way that um, also you here in the U.S. could go for that. Uh, we, uh, so it would be no problem to forward you um, the, um, um, the, the information about the certain uh, herbs and uh, maybe one of your pharma, uh, uh, so compound pharmacies will be able to go for that as well. So what we have noticed, and this protocol is now in charge for more than 12 years, and it, it was one of my first approaches. I have done so and uh, always uh, showing good outcoming results. And um, uh, the, 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 the concentration of the compounds is pretty high. You need only a small amount of drops um, every day uh, to get really good outcoming results. So we start in children with three times daily one drop, in adults maxim uh, maximum three uh, times daily seven drops, and that's pretty well working. So M1 is uh, the anti-infective compound, M2 is uh, some immune support, some organ support, similar to the DTC capsules I mentioned before. And um, the other ones, uh, and there's another big advantage. Um, you can, uh, these tinctures, you can uh, individualize um, or um, these exactly um, uh, uh, what patients need. So if it, it's coming up uh, that um, the patient is uh, allergic or um, has bad tolerance to one of the ingredients, um, you can, um, uh, you can uh, 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 quit this and running only the other ones uh, at the same time. 
And um, uh, there's also um, uh, be um, uh, a short in vitro study uh, done in, uh, at the University of Huascali showing really good outcoming results. And that was one of the first time that um, uh, it could be shown that herbals are able to kill Borrelia. Yeah? And that's, um, that's, uh, that's um, uh, pretty good, I guess, uh, for patients. Uh, so there are other herbal extracts also available uh, for some uh, certain health issue um, uh, to support uh, dysfunction of, um, of uh, different organ systems. Um, I don't have the time to go in more details, um, so it's specific in, uh, in all of the patients. So patient A needs different uh, herbal uh, extract as uh, patient B. Uh, so it's a very in, uh, individual approach um, uh, in addition um, uh, to the M protocol or, uh, or the Lime Plus protocol. Um, but um, I want to um, uh, give you some more uh, information about uh, the other uh, pillars of our approach. You know, um, in general, it's always recommendable to go for some uh, changes of your lifestyle. It could be based on specific uh, diets. Um, that could have also big impact um, on your uh, general condition and shape. Um, so, um, you know, less or no alcohol, the beverages are uh, uh, always recommendable. Um, uh, so, uh, certain uh, types of uh, specific um, uh, diets uh, are recommended. So, in, uh, in our clinic, uh, we, uh, in general, we recommend something which we call anti-inflammatory diet. Uh, that, that is very similar to, um, uh, to the so-called, uh, in Europe, it's very common Mediterranean diet. means a lot of fresh salads, uh, fresh vegetables, less meat, less fish, um, a lot of proteins, for example, uh, less or no sugar, and uh, this is uh, pretty well supporting patients as well if they decide uh, to support themselves um, for going such, um, uh, such specific uh, diets. Um, uh, uh, the next column, um, um, additionally uh, dietary supplements, which could be very useful, beneficial, and supportive for patients. Uh, you know, um, I guess you're very familiar that uh, most, or I, I would merely say all of the patients have uh, lacks of vitamins, have lacks of win uh, minerals. Uh, that is uh, one of the uh, issues um, having a problem with chronic infectious diseases. So uh, before starting treatment, uh, you should go for some diagnostic and then you can find all the need um, uh, uh, what a patient uh, should go for, uh, for the substitution of certain uh, vitamins. So vitamin B, um, lack of vitamin D and vitamin D deficiency uh, is very, very common and uh, so especially in Europe uh, very often uh, indicated uh, but, all the other, uh, um, uh, um, uh, but for all the others there could be also a need and it's the same for minerals. Uh, magnesium um, uh, is, uh, could be a big issue in most of the patients having musculoskeletal issues or uh, even neurological issues um, could be very beneficial and helpful. Um, uh, other dietary supplements are indicated um, if patients are presenting specific um, symptoms and complaints. Um, so the first uh, two one uh, Eleutherococcus uh, or the Siberian ginseng and quercetin um, are well recommended if patients um, are presenting uh, so-called Herxheimer reactions or if there's uh, any other flare-up of severe symptoms and, um, and the deterioration, uh, you can put um, uh, on top uh, some Eleutherococcus or quercetin. Um, uh, we have good experience with that stuff. Uh, curcumin um, is one of my favorites um, uh, in all the patients having neurological issues, so like brain fog, like um, peripheral neuropathies, um, 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 uh, cognitive dysfunction. It's best recommendable um, in certain amounts to go on a daily basis on that in addition. Um, um, it's a it's in some kind of very specific anti-inflammatory substance. So a general um, um, anti-inflammatory substance could be seen um, uh, in the omega-3 fatty acids or alpha lipoic acid could be also doing a good job um, if um, there's a big problem with neuropathy. Um, so for Morgan's patient, all, uh, patients, all these crawling um, uh, and uh, sticking sensation um, uh, could, be, uh, could improve a bit um, uh, while running these anti-inflammatory substances. 
Um, and uh, so for the sleep disorders, for example, you can go on the uh, well-known SAMe, 5-HTP, tryptophan, whatever. Um, uh, so these substances are doing a quite good job and could be seen sometimes as a good alternative solution um, regarding um, uh, um, antidepressive or um, uh, uh, medication. And um, last but not least, very, very important, I wouldn't go for any ineffective uh, trial in patient uh, without uh, running probiotics at the same time, um, uh, even to avoid uh, gastrointestinal issues. And, uh, you know, one says uh, uh, 60 to 70 percent of your immune system is located in your gut, and it's always uh, worth uh, to go on probiotics um, uh, uh, for a longer time and they are good offers uh, in general. So um, the next uh, um, uh, pillar um, could be seen um, uh, in, um, uh, in problems with toxins. So some of our patients are presenting a big health issue based on um, the exposure to uh, uh, different kinds of toxins, could be heavy metal, could be others. And um, uh, so I've noticed that some patients uh, uh, responded uh, very badly on the use um, of uh, antibiotics, and later on we found out that there was a big burden uh, based on, uh, on mold or heavy metals. And uh, so it's definitely recommendable um, uh, to uh, make some diagnostic uh, before starting treatment and uh, even to find out um, uh, exactly what's going on and to make finally to, uh, to uh, the decision um, uh, what to be, uh, uh, on what to go first. You know, um, there's, so uh, due to my knowledge, no exact uh, data based on uh, publication available to, to tell people uh, what the best approach to start first with detoxification and then um, um, uh, um, uh, to go on anti-infective treatment or anti-inflammatory treatment. It's mostly based on experience and on the doctor's gut feeling, I guess, uh, but uh, no problem to find that out. Um, so pain is one of the big health issues uh, patients uh, have problem with, um, and that is what I see in most of my, I was in the overall majority of Morgellons patients. Um, you know, there are different types of pain seen in patients, musculoskeletal pain, neuropathic pain, and um, I guess um, there's big influence um, of this uh, form of stress uh, on uh, the, um, uh, the patient's immune function, and I'm, I try always to convince my patient to go on some t kind of um, uh, um, of uh, uh, painkillers. That means a good uh, pain management could lead to much better and much faster outcoming results. Uh, sometimes there's a need for so-called core analgetics. That means um, so antidepressants in very low dosages could be an uh, amazing job uh, regarding um, the pain levels, um, but um, there are options for other uh, uh, support as well. Um, you know, um, there's uh, also um, um, a chance of uh, good other support by doing uh, non-medication, um, uh, going for, not for medication, based on electrotherapies, for example. Uh, we have good, um, uh, seen a good outcoming result based on acupuncture um, or specific massage techniques. Um, so, uh, the next one, uh, based for alternative solution, Give me two more minutes. It's okay. Um, I'm, I'm very close to my end. Um, uh, so sorry for the, for this. So there are also good um, uh, herbal um, uh, approaches available. So um, basically based on um, uh, devil's claw, for example, nettle, curcumin, bromelain, white willow bark is doing a quite amazing job uh, to downscale the pain levels. And there are also some uh, homeopathic approaches, which I do not want to point out uh, 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 because of lacking of time. Um, next column, very important part, exercising and physiotherapy. Um, if, um, uh, if you have access uh, to this supportive uh, treatment, go for that. And uh, we have, um, uh, our experience is uh, start immediately with exercising because that does not have only um, uh, impact on your mobility and all the uh, joint and muscular problems. Um, uh, um, you will find a lot of support for your immune system while exercising. I know it's sometimes um, uh, a hard job to go for that, um, but uh, we have seen if patients 
and start on a very low level, uh, they can stand it and they will get uh, within a short time um, best, um, uh, uh, best support for, your, uh, for their improvements. Stress management, also a very big point. Um, any kind of stress, emotional stress, uh, physical stress, uh, mental stress it could have a big impact on your immune function. So uh, that's always recommendable a good um, uh, uh, pain manage uh, a good stress management at the same time. And you know um, our approaches are mostly based on uh, progressive muscle relaxation, uh, according Jacobson, autogenic training, uh, or the Chinese uh, ones like uh, Qigong, Tai Chi uh, could be also very beneficial. Oh, well, uh, also beneficial uh, for, for the patient, sorry. And last but not least, uh, the, uh, the eighth uh, uh, pillar is the social support. I guess um, most of your um, Morgan's patients have bad experience even getting acceptance in your own family. Yeah? And it's similar uh, to other organizations, so at work uh, or with insurance companies. And I guess um, it should be the, uh, our intention, being a physician, to give you always um, the best support in dealing uh, with all these administrational stuff. And uh, that is something um, uh, which supports you best. And um, sometimes it's needed not only to have a personal consultation with you as a patient, it's also um, uh, necessary to include other family members, even to explain a bit more uh, what, what, do, uh, what does it mean to have more gallons or any of these other chronic health issues. And uh, for me, it's, it's also a very, very important point. Okay, so let's go to the conclusion. Um, I'm running out of time. So in general, um, I have to mention that it is possible in different approaches, means um, based on conventional um, use of antibiotics, based on um, the um, alternative herbal uh, compounds, um, to get rid of the uh, uh, different uh, bacteria, viruses, parasites, whatever. Uh, they are good options to go for that. And um, uh, while staying on the, um, uh, on the accompanying treatment, uh, uh, it is possible to minimize possible side effects and to build up a very stable and um, a strange immune system. And um, if you go for such a holistic concept, um, you also um, stabilize uh, your, your general uh, body shape and condition. And, um, um, so one of the big points I had to learn, so uh, I mentioned at the beginning I was trained as a conventional doctor. So um, in my former university hospital, uh, nobody uh, took care for all these points. So if there was a bacterial infection, um, that meant at that time only to go for antibiotics, nothing else. So we had been uh, not interested in any other health issue. That means um, all the other um, things uh, chronic infection could cause, so uh, impact on all the different organ system. So um, uh, it is worse to go um, on such an approach even to get um, uh, much better outcoming results. And, uh, I personally believe that uh, many of you um, will have uh, good uh, chances to get much better outcoming results. Um, and a cure, it's a question if that is possible, but uh, I guess we are getting closer and closer to, uh, to that goal. So thank you very much for your attention.